Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Rob and I love to travel and make videos of my trips. So earlier this year, I fell in love with the North Coast 500 in Scotland. I took my camper van, packed up Jazz and Archie and had one of the best road trips ever. One of the best drives you'll probably ever do. I even made an hour long video about it, which you may have already watched. So I fell in love with the Scottish Highlands that much that I decided to go and do it again. Except this time, things would be different. This time, I was flying into Inverness driving the route in a hire car and staying at hotels and B&Bs whilst visiting some of the places I didn't get to the first time around. Probably one of the best roads in the entire world. Oh yeah, one minor detail I forgot to add. I did it at the start of winter. That was the fastest, most powerful wind I've ever experienced. So in this video, I'll be answering some of the questions I'm sure you have. Was it any good going in the winter? How did you find staying in hotels and B&Bs? What other cool places did you visit? And are you mad? Now sit back, Grab a can of iron brew, subscribe to the channel, and enjoy Scotland's North Coast 500 Part 2. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, and we're on another whirlwind adventure today. Um, we're going to get the sad part of the video out of the way. Um, so if any of my subscribers, anyone who's watched the first North Coast 500 video will know, this young chap in the back um, came for the ride, but unfortunately he's not coming with us this time. Um, I know. I'm pretty good, so we're going to go and drop him off at my mum's. Hold on. This way. Alright, be a good boy. We're going to miss you. I will be back in a week. What you got in your hand? Uh, Maggot. <laughs> Have a good week, Arch. So we're at Birmingham Airport and the plan is we're going to catch our flight up to Inverness and then we're going to grab the car, head to the hotel in Inverness and that's where this adventure starts really. So we arrived in Inverness on bonfire night and just about managed to catch the end of the display before heading for dinner and of course sipping down a trusty pint of tenants. So our winter North Coast 500 trip would once again see us heading anti-clockwise from east around to west. Going anti-clockwise allows you to ease into the driving. The journey just seems to get better and better, and overall, we'd highly recommend it. We've just been watching the BBC weather forecast, and there's like 70 mile an hour uh, gales and stuff forecast for later today. Um, I think they're predicting power outages and stuff, so we're gonna basically get packed up here, we're gonna jump in the hire car, and our route is starting. So we're in Inverness right now, we're heading north, we're gonna go anti-clockwise again, and we're gonna call in first place, Dornock. So our first stop in Dornock, we're doing a bit of a food tour. Um, we stopped at the Milk and Honey Calf and breakfast was just like everything you'd ever want really. They did a full Scottish but me being the pussy that I am got rid of the... Why? Pussy. I am a bit of a pussy. Am I not? Me being the pussy that I am, I ditched off the haggis, I ditched off the black pudding, ditched off the mushrooms and the egg. Um, but yeah, highly recommend the stop at that milk and honey cafe if you're here in Dorna. Um, we're going to go and wash it down now with a hot chocolate from Coco Martin, which we highly rate. Um, so yeah, let's hope it's as good as last time. Hello. Yeah. Two hot chocolate. Yeah. Yes, please. Put anything at all with it as well. Any um, chocolate or a bacon or anything like that. We should probably get some chocolate after the the last time we had probably some. What, what, what's your camera for? Is that? Is it film or? Yeah, yeah. We we did the North Coast 500 in May and we stopped here, um, so we're doing it again. But. Oh right, okay. Are you are you online as well? Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Uh, he's uh, my YouTube channel is Robbie Rome's. I was going to say, because I 
because I do look as well. Oh, oh do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's, good. that's really nice as well. Right, uh, you'd have probably seen a quick clip from inside Coco Martin there. Uh, we got chatting to the woman who's recommended about a million different cafes and stop offs, and, and she was really friendly. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting if we can stop at a couple of them. But the hot chocolate is still as good as I can remember. And the bench where we actually sat the first time we came is just behind is that one. So yeah, 100% if you come Dornoch, which you have to if you're doing the North Coast 500, you got to stop and have a hot chocolate and have a chat with the ladies in there because they're really friendly and uh, yeah. So our little whistle stop tour in Dornoch is done. Um, if you're coming on the North Coast 500 and you haven't seen my other video, there's a lot to do around this area. There's an incredible beach which we walked Archie on. There's the golf course, plenty of great places to eat and drink. Um, yeah, it's just a place you have to come and stop off. Jazzy just bought um, some books from the Donut Bookshop. So at some point she'll pretend that she's going to go and read them and then 10 minutes later she'll be drooling up the window. Falling asleep. 100%. <laughs> right, let's go. We just pulled up at Embo Beach, which is just up the road from Dornock and um, just literally like five, seven minutes, something like that in the car. And once again, another sweeping beach, nice yellow sand, sand dunes going into the distance. Um, quite picturesque, and it's that picturesque, this whole area that Jazz is on um, rightmove.com looking for a house or a bungalow. This one's got a library. You know when you just randomly get right move up and go, oh yeah, let's move there. A library. I just found one with a library. So there we go. We're moving up to Dornoch and we're going to have a library. Think of all the books you could buy and put in them. We're heading up to the Big Burn now. It's just outside Goldsby. From Embo Beach to the Big Burn car park is approximately 11 miles, 19 minutes. So we're heading up there now. And there we have it, the Big Burn Walk. Just got a leaf down my back. Um, I have to say, I, I'm super impressed with that. I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, I haven't really looked into any of the photos or Instagrams or anything like that. But I would say that's on a par with the Fairy Den Walk on the Black Isle, which is definitely something you should do if you've got the time. Uh, but this was definitely on a par. Um, a, a lot of the bridges that cross the stream would just look epic. And I think at this time of year, with all the leaves and that, it just looks even better. So if you are coming out of season, it's a great place. If you come in, in in the summer, definitely a great place. Just up the road from Dornoch. I would give it a nine out of 10. I think it's a, a pretty good place to stop off. I think in total it's took us about an hour, would you say? About an hour, it's not particularly difficult. But yeah, you'll get some good photos and it's just nice to be outside. We even saw a red squirrel. So um, yeah, mega impressed with that. So we have just pulled in at Dunrobin Castle. Now this is probably one of the places you see on the North Coast 500 as sort of a must stop off. We didn't do it in May because we had Archie and you're not allowed dogs in. Um, today we've come here and just pulled in. We know it's not open so it shuts in like October. Normally this is it's definitely worth a stop off if you've got kids. Um, just got a cool couple of drone shots so yeah. So we're here at Brora Beach. 
So the car park is where the golf club is. Now, last time we came, you were able to see the Highland Coo, which were literally just walking around on the golf course and on the beach area. Um, we can't see any, and because it's like raining, then windy, then rainy, then windy, I've flown the drone just to see if we could spot them. And for whatever reason, they're not here. Now, I don't know if the golf club just like wear them out of a shed in the summer to get people to come here. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I have no idea where they've gone. So we'll carry on around the route. And if we do spot any more Highland cows, we'll give you a shout. But um, yeah, we're going to head on towards uh, Wick now. We're staying in a place that's kind of 20, 30 minutes outside Wick in a small cottage in pretty much the middle of nowhere. So I think we're going to call in and get some supplies and then try and find this place and bunker down for the night because Storm Chief is coming. I don't know the name of the storm, but um, yeah, it sounds like we're in for a pretty nasty night of wind and rain. If you know mine and Jazz's history of bad weather on holidays and travel, then it's to be expected. Right, back on the road. If you are heading straight up to Wick from Brora, you're talking about an hour's drive. So this is our humble abode for the night and we're in a little tiny farm cottage just outside of Wick and it's called the Blingery Cottage and this place was on Airbnb and it's a single one bedroom cottage with a traditional log burner, original stone building. We've never really stayed in a place like this have we? No. But we thought we'd try out some local um, places. So yeah, it's right up Jazzy Street, I'll be honest. Got a bit of character. Not even Italian here. What are we gonna do? Well, I'm pretty impressed with this place. What do you think? It's beautiful. Beautiful? It's absolutely make a kilt out of them for me. So we're just gonna stick on some dinner. It's been quite a long day. I mean, it's only, what is it like, quarter to six. We're gonna turn in for an early night and uh, get some dinner on, watch a bit of TV and kick back. We've got a long day tomorrow, but yeah, all in all, I think today's been quite a success. Good morning, it's day two and we're at the Blindery Cottage. Um, I'll put the link in the description for the Airbnb because we've really enjoyed it here to be honest. It's really cosy. We're in the middle of nowhere. And the best thing about it, we didn't realise because we arrived here and it was pitch black last night. We woke up and opened the curtains and we were surrounded by Highland cows. So after trying to find them yesterday on Brora Beach, we were literally surrounded by, there's got to be 20, 30 of them, all different colours, shapes and sizes. Um, but yeah. We are almost ready to go. Jazz is just finishing up getting ready. And good sleep last night. The bed here is really comfy, so would highly recommend this place. Um, today we're faced with some adverse weather, to say the least. I've just been out trying to take a few photos of the cows, and it must be 50, 60, 70 mile an hour wind. And not only that, they're like absolutely freezing. So we're gonna have to wrap up today, Jazz. And our first stop off of the day is gonna be the Waligo Steps, place we haven't been to yet, and hopefully we don't get blown down the steps or off the cliff. So we're literally just gonna pack up our stuff now, jump back in the car, and then head down there. So we're just a few miles away from our um, cottage where we stayed last night and we pulled up at the car park for the Wally Go Steps. Um, I think it used to be um, a natural harbour that fishermen used to use years ago and there's some steps basically going down the cliff so we're going to go investigate that. The problem we've got is you might have just seen, I mean look at my hair, talk about windswept. Couldn't even achieve that with a hairdryer. This has got to be <laughs> the most powerful wind I've ever seen anywhere. We've been to Iceland and it's been pretty bad. The car's now rocking. 
but yeah this this wind is something else now i understand why in the highlands a lot of the bins like this one over there are actually mounted to the ground with a metal pole so i'm not going to be able to do much talking because you won't hear a word i'm saying with the wind but we're going to go and try and get down the steps without dying so wish us luck feeling a little windswept after doing the wally go steps um but nonetheless as we sort of got a little bit further down the cliff the wind wasn't so bad so you see you come back up to the top that you realize how bad it is um but yeah nice little stop off so just up the road from uh wick is castle sinclair um which is the one we went to last time which is really impressive again if you've watched the first video you see all the videos and stuff from that um the cool drone shots but if you've got kids that's definitely worth going to um, I don't think it matters what time of year you go and see Castle Sinclair because it's just open all year round, there's no like entry fee or anything like that. So the next stop was meant to be a quick look at Kai's Castle. Unfortunately it's pretty difficult to access and the weather was horrendous so we continued straight up to John O'Groats. We didn't stop at Wick this time around but don't forget if you go in there to check out Castle Sinclair and Wick Town itself, there's a lot to do around this area. So we're just parked up on the roundabout at the John O'Groats post and we've just completely failed in getting a photo up there. Managed to get one on the tripod, but the tripod and the camera kept falling over. Jazz tried to get a selfie, but the sea spray and the rain and the wind are just pummeling us from every direction. So we look like squinty, weird little John O'Groats people. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, one thing to bear in mind, uh, if you're coming out of season and the weather's a bit uh, rubbish, it's quite difficult to get a decent photo here. Um, I mean, like this is a bit of a freak windstorm. We're getting gusts of like 70, 80 miles an hour and it feels like about minus 15. And the waves behind, just in the little harbour by the John O'Groats post, are absolutely huge. There's little boats in there that are getting smashed around. Um, so yeah, you can probably see and hear the car being shook around by the wind it's that strong so we're gonna get back in the car and we're gonna head up to Dunnet Head which I can just see in the distance over there um, last time we came we did the Duncan's Behead sea stacks and we walked up to that way I don't think we're going up there today in this weather so instead we're gonna to go to Dunnet Head which is actually the northernmost point of the UK uh, the last time I said it, do you remember? I, I said that Duncan's Behead, John O'Groats, sort of just up the road, was the northernmost part of the UK. It's actually Dunnet Head, so that's where we're going to go, and I'll correct myself. So we're now at Dunnet Head, which is, according to the sign, the most northerly point of mainland Britain. And I'll correct myself on the last video where I got that bit wrong. Um, so we're just parked up by the lighthouse. I'm gonna have a quick look. I don't think being on the edge of a cliff at the northernly most point of Britain in this weather is particularly safe. I'm gonna go and take a look anyway, so. Now you wouldn't have heard a single word of what I've just said, but walking down to the viewpoint and just taking a look over the sea, that was the fastest, most powerful wind I've ever experienced. There was these poor, uh, I think Thai couple just sat against the wall, holding on to each other for dear life. And when they'd finally peeled their eyelids open to look at me, the chap was like, um, do you know what the wind speed is? And I was like, I don't know, 80 miles an hour. And he was like, 80 miles an hour? <laughs> Oh my God. So uh, yeah, I'm glad to be back in the car, although the car door may be also broke. So if you do come and do the North Coast 500 and it's windy, always take care when opening your car door. 
I think coming here with a hangover would be the perfect remedy. <laughs> you just go outside for like 30 seconds in this wind and spray and uh, I think your life would be back on track. The other mad thing, there's waterfalls that are going off the cliff that are blowing back up and going upwards. Bizarre. So the journey continues, we're heading west along the coastal road and I've had to call back in at Straffy Bay, which is one of the beaches we stopped at last time that just completely blew our mind. If you just seen the video, you'll understand why, but I'm just gonna pop my head over the hill. So when you park up here, there's like a toilet, there's a little cemetery uh, just on the hill. And yeah, basically over the ridge of that hill there is where the beach is. So people might come here and not actually know that there's an incredible beach, but there actually is. But trust me, it's worth coming here to get a photo. So I'm just gonna have a quick look and uh, see if it's as beautiful as we remember. So yeah, Straffy Beach, just as beautiful as I remembered. Uh, there's a couple here just about to put their wellies on and walk the dog. It's a massive beach, great for walking dogs. So yeah, recommend the stop off. We're gonna get back on the road now and we are heading west. We're continuing our journey on this North Coast 500 autumn slash winter edition. We're gonna to head towards Betty Hill and we're stopping off at a beach there called Far Beach, a place we didn't go to last time. And we're staying now in a glamping pod um, just outside of Talmine, I think it's called. And the view over the sea and the little islands is just amazing. Uh, this pod is called the Highland Coo Pod. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cozy. It's on Airbnb, so I'll post a link. And we've got a takeout bottle of wine from the hotel restaurant and a couple of cheesecakes. So that's us for the night, really. Hopefully the weather tomorrow will be a bit better. So yeah, we're going to turn in for the night. Get cosy in the coo, we'll leave it at that. So good morning, it's day three on our North Coast adventure trip. So the name of this uh, place is actually Island View Camping Pods. Um, and that's the reason. You got multiple islands over into the sea there. And uh, I woke up this morning and the sun was just rising over the hill there. So can't think of many better places to wake up and see the view, to be honest. But yeah, today we are carrying on west. We're gonna call in at Durness. Um, last time we stayed at Sango Sands at the campsite. Um, obviously we're not going to be staying there this time. We're going to carry on around towards Carlescu. Um, we're going to do the Carlescu Bridge. Hopefully call back in at the Wailing Widow Waterfall because that was one of our main highlights. And then tonight we're staying um, in Drumbeg. So there's the Drumbeg viewpoint that looks over uh, the various islands out at the sea. We're staying in a hotel, B&B, small place there. And we've had to print off some instructions to find it because apparently there's no phone signal. So it's going to be interesting. But yeah, feeling optimistic. The weather's a little bit better today, so hopefully it shouldn't be so bad. So we've just pulled over. We're at that part of the North Coast 500 where it just seems to get better and better. In terms of the views, the landscapes, the burger bites that get passed to you by the co-pilot. It's just epic, it's just so epic. Um, we drive from Tong, where we stayed last night, um, to where we are now, we've just pulled in at Sango Sands. It's just epic. And I know a lot of people give the East Coast a load of stick because the, the scenery and the mountains aren't so vast. And they're not, but it just sort of ramps up. And I remember feeling this same feeling the first time we did this trip, and I've got the same feeling now. I just love this place. I love the mountains, I love the landscapes. It's just ace. Anyway, um, we're at Sango Sands campsite, which is actually closed, and we've just pulled in at a bay. We're probably gonna get in trouble for being here, but um, if you do come out of season, 
I think there's another car park, but the Sango Sands Beach slash Bay area is epic. And there's a nice little viewpoint, which I only know access of via the campsite, and that's why we've parked here. So we're gonna have a walk up there and get a few vids and a couple of photos. And just around the corner, you've got Smooth Cave, also another good stop off. Obviously, we're not gonna go back there today. We've, we've already been and seen that before. So yeah, let's go and check out this viewpoint. Sun's viewpoint and surprisingly it's not that windy we've got a nice beach to the left nice beach to the right in terms of the beach the color of the sea the overall scenery there can't be many better looking places in Scotland than this and it's just really easy to get to there's a lovely set of steps bringing you up to the viewpoint definitely worth a stop off if you do in the North Coast 500 in the summer the winter the spring whenever definitely worth stopping off here we made our way from Durness to Scourie for a pit stop where we were able to spot a seal and a couple of oyster catchers. We then got back on the road and headed to the famous Carlescu Bridge. So we've just pulled in at the magnificent Carlescu Bridge. Um, it was just one of them places when we stopped here last time. It just blows your mind. It's not so much the bridge, which is like pretty epic in its own right. It's just the surrounding scenery and mountains and stuff. We've um, pretty much got the entire bridge to ourselves. There's one car passing over now. I think that's been the first in probably the 15, 20 minutes that we've been here. So out of season, you have it all to yourself. When we came in, the start of May, was it the start of May? There was probably 10 cars here, something like that. But yeah, incredible place. You'll pass through here when you do the North Coast 500 anyway, so you've got to stop and get some photos and stuff. The other good thing about the Carlescu Bridge is that it's located literally 10, 15 minutes away from the Loch Nagamic, um, which is where the Wailing Widow waterfall is, which Jazz found for us last time on the trip. So we're going to head up there in probably 10-15 minutes and see what the weather's doing. The weather was actually rubbish for quite a while, so we made the short drive to Ardvrick Castle, which is less than 10 minutes from the Wailing Widow Falls. Ardvrick Castle dates back to the 16th century and stands proud on the mighty Loch Assynt. pulled up at the Wailing Widow waterfall and on Google Maps, make sure you download Google Maps offline because the signal out here is so dodgy. It's called the Loch Nagamic um, waterfall car park. Now, if you park here, make sure you go off to the left and follow it all the way up. I've just literally flew the drone up there and it took about 10 seconds, but the walk up there is a bit sketchy and a bit dodgy underfoot, so just take care. And because I've flown the drone up and we've been there before, I'm being lazy and I'm not walking up there. Great stop off. Uh, just found it on Instagram when we came last time, so that was a great spot because we wouldn't have probably come here. Um, but it's literally just around the corner from Kylescu Bridge, and then seven, eight miles that way is Ardbrick uh, Castle. So you've got like three really good locations within a short space. So we have arrived at our nighttime accommodation and we're staying at a place called Tor Drum, just outside of uh, Drumbeg. Oh yeah, the place we're actually staying, um, the breakfast is included. The room is really, really nice, it's really cosy, um, looks like it's specked well, so 
we'll see what the breakfast's like in the morning. But yeah, it's been a long and weirdly broke up day. We could have probably skipped a few destinations, included a couple more and been a bit further around on the route, but it is what it is. So this time of year, you've got to be really careful that the things you want to do are either open or are suitable to do um, in bad weather. They're the two tips I would definitely recommend for this time of year. So yeah, we're going to bunker down for the night. The weather outside is absolutely shocking again. Um, and we'll go again in the morning. Good morning, day four, and uh, we've just got back up from breakfast, which was top notch. And the view that we woke up to this morning, uh, again, we got here in the dark, so we were assured there was a great view out there, and there really is. 100% recommend it. I'm going to put the link on booking.com for the B&B &B hotel, whatever it is, below. Um, we definitely recommend staying here. The owners are really, really friendly. We got chatting to an older couple from Orkney, uh, we were doing a few days down this region and I think we both agreed that this hotel, the breakfast and the view is just amazing. So We're going to get mission in pretty soon and there's a few stops today and our final destination for today is at Wallapool so let's get on the road. So if you do come and do the Clash Nestle Falls, the path along either side is really boggy, so make sure you've got suitable walking boots or wellies on, and take your time. There's a lot of rock, there's a lot of bog, and uh, yeah, if you're here with the kids, just take it steady, because you're gonna fall over at some point, probably. Definitely recommend to stop off, just around the corner from Drumbeg, and heading that way, uh, not too far from Loch Inver. So yeah, I'm gonna head back to the car, get warmed up again, and then get back on the road. After exploring Clactoll Beach and the amazing Akmalvik Beach, we drove the short distance to Loch Inver, home to the Loch Inver Larder and its famous pies. These pies are a North Coast 500 rite of passage. You absolutely must stop and grab one. Or in our case, probably five. A big drum roll. She's got a face full of pie. Yeah. Oh, look at That's that. Amazing. Oh, it smells incredible. If you guys could smell this back home, even if you weren't hungry, I think you would be hungry right now. We're about halfway through this pie, mash, gravy and peas, and I was worried that this place was going to be just all hype and like not live up to expectations, but I have to say, so far I'm very impressed. So I've gone with a, a chicken curry pie, with gravy, peas and mash. I know it sounds random, gravy with chicken curry, but it works, I don't know how it works. Jazz has gone with a um, cauliflower, broccoli and cheese pie, uh, again with the gravy, mash and peas, and I've tried it, it's equally delicious. We were that ate fat, all the pies. who ate all the pies at us, we got a steak and ale pie, and a butternut squash, and sweet, sweet potato. And a Christmas pie. And a Christmas one as well, so, 
I think we're gonna be sorted for the rest of the trip in terms of pies. The plan is this, we are in a food coma and now we are gonna go get back on the road. We're heading towards Alderpool, which is where we're staying tonight. And from a recommendation from the place we stayed last night, we're gonna take the coastal, slightly coastal road um, rather than the more direct route which would normally take you past uh, Lockersint and the Ardvrek Castle, which is where we were yesterday. So we're going to go a slightly different route. It's a little bit longer, it's only 10 or 15 minutes longer, but hopefully we're going to get to see some places we haven't seen yet. So let's go. So it's the end of day four, uh, we completed that road down to Ullapool and we're now in our accommodation for the night. Um, the accommodation is a little chalet, it's called Lockbroom Chalets. Again I'll put the link below, we booked direct with them. Uh, it's a nice self-contained little chalet unit, so we've got the kitchen, living room in here. Uh, the kitchen's fully kitted out as well with an oven and everything which is pretty cool. And then next door we've got the bedroom with the bathroom and uh, yeah, pretty good location. It's about four miles down the road from Ullapool. Um But yeah, today's been awesome. Uh, the weather's been a little bit better. We're just gonna chill for the rest of the night now. It feels like about midnight again, but it gets dark, doesn't it, at this time of year at like 4.30, something like that. So another thing to bear in mind if you are planning on coming at this time of year, obviously it gets dark quite early, so that will limit your time driving potentially if you're not great in the dark or some of the things you might see and do. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna wrap it up for tonight and we'll pick it back up in the morning. Good morning, it's day number four or five, I can't remember what day we're on now. Uh, we just jumped in the car, we stayed at the Lock Broom Chalets last night, which weren't too bad to be honest. So yeah, we're drawing towards the end of this trip now um, as we get towards Applecross, so Hopefully some of the stops along the way today are going to be pretty cool. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back on the road. So, here we go. So, we've pulled up at Paul U and uh, the drive here took about an hour from um, all the pool where we were staying. It's a great drive, very scenic. You have loads of places you can pull over and get some photos at the side of the road. Along the way, actually, there's the Falls of Misak, I think I've said that correctly, um, which is the giant gorge with the suspension bridge. If you've got a thing for heights, um, that would be pretty interesting to take a look over the edge. Uh, definitely worth stopping off there, though. We didn't I've bother this time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jess has got a problem with her ears and a balance at the minute, so that's probably a good thing we avoided that. We've basically stopped for lunch. We've stopped at the Bridge Cottage Cafe, uh, which is also a sourdough bakery and they bake their own bread there and stuff. And the food was just exceptional. They've got limited winter opening hours, but um, if you Google them, they're all online, up to date. Um, I had a really good croque monsieur, parlez-vous français. Jazz had a sourdough hummus sandwich and they came with fries and coleslaw. Also had a great hot chocolate there. And we've also got a slice of cake to take out. Now we were gonna eat this later on because we're really full from the food, but I literally just opened mine and it looks so fresh and smells so delicious that we've just got stuck into it. So that was a full piece of cake when I started doing this little vlogging section. And now he's gone. <laughs> Where's he gone, mate? <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna tuck into the rest of the cake and then we're gonna move around the coast so we've been following the Gerlock Coastal Road, I think that's what it's called. So I've just pulled in at the Gerlock Museum and had a little visit. Now, for me, museums, art galleries aren't really my thing, but um, I, I'd seen some really good reviews online. It's pretty cool because it's an old uh, World War bunker that's been converted into this pretty new museum. Uh, so I've just had a walk around and I, actually I'm pretty impressed. 
if the weather's a bit rubbish or you're actually interested in sort of the local history and you want to get to know a bit more about the area um, I definitely recommend to stop there it's only a fiver to get in you'll be able to learn about the local geology the local history the old traditions of farming uh, working at the sea and I was just reading back up at um, Paul Yu that actually the lock here lock U was one of the main naval bases for World War II so a lot of the submarines and a lot of the British Navy ships left from the lock just up the road so quite a lot of history in this area and if you're into history and World War II and all that sort of stuff I'd recommend to stop off there um, we're going to get back on the road now and we're heading in the direction of Torridon and we're going to hope to see some stags and deer and some fantastic mountain landscapes there so next destination hopefully Torridon <laughs> Callum, <laughs> we've heard about you, mate. Ah, you want some food? You're a good looking thing, ain't you? Hope you like some ice crispies. <laughs> <laughs> you like them? Oh. <laughs> You're a lovely guy, ain't you? Oh, you like to ask Chris, Rizzy, you want to give him some? Yeah, he's want some more. Can you come around this side, Cal? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Got the camera? Are you right here? Yeah. Oh, Cal. Oh, he's so hungry. Nice. Watch you don't get the plastic. Plastic. We've pulled in at the Benier car park on the Torridon side and this car park is especially famous for um, a stag called Callum who's completely tame, he'll feed out of your hand, he's got no front teeth so we can't bite or hurt you but just be careful because um, the sign's up saying don't feed him and if he gets aggressive he could do some damage with his antlers and his hooves but he seems friendly enough um, but yeah I think it's a bit of a local tourist attraction we've just been feeding him a bit of cereal and there's a chap here who's been feeding biscuits out of his own mouth to Callum um, I'm not sure if he works locally or he comes here quite often but uh, he seems to know him well enough and uh, yeah if you want to come and get some cool pictures of a stag and some deer with a great backdrop this is the place to do it So I've just stopped outside the Torridon Hotel and the reason I've stopped is because um, there's a group of Highland cow here and uh, they look pretty cute so we're going to get a couple of photos of them. Just up the road uh, in between that car park where you can see Callum the Stag and the Torridon Hotel um, is the Torridon Deer Museum and they've got deer there uh, in like a large paddock that you can walk around and do a couple of walks down to the lock here. Um, so if you've got kids or you want to see a bit more of the wildlife, definitely call in there. The drive through this Torridon estate is just world class. It's probably one of the best roads in the entire world. It's got to be in like the top 20 roads in the world or something like that. It's just so picturesque and in this time of year with the autumnal colours, oh man, cannot beat it. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get a few shots of the Highland Coo and then we're back on the road towards Applecross. That's our final destination for today. We arrived at our accommodation for the night, which was the Applecross Inn where we enjoyed a lovely hot bath and put ourselves in yet another food coma at dinner before getting off to bed.
So it's our last final day. We've checked out from the Apple Cross Inn and the first port of call today is the Bilatna Bar Pass. We did this last time in the van and we ended up coming over it, uh, staying here, having some chips and then going back over it, which was a mission, but, um, but yeah, I think we enjoyed it. I think if you're hiring a car and you're staying at hotels and stuff like that, you'd be able to do the Bilatna Bar Pass, no problem. Um, as long as the weather's okay. There is a sign that says um, that the road's usually closed in wintry conditions, so that's just something to bear in mind, but um, the weather today ain't too bad by the looks of it. So we're gonna get up over the Black Nibar Pass and then head south towards Loch Carron. So we're heading south before we head east back to Inverness, uh, and our destination for today um, is a hotel on Loch Ness. So, so yeah, let's go do the Black Nibar Pass. So we've just peaked on the Black Nambar Pass, we've just gone over the summit. From what I remember last time there was a bit of cloud when we got to the top, but uh, nothing on this level. We're just heading um, into the snaky bit. I was going to try and get the drone out this time to get some shots, but whether it'll be worth it or not, I have no idea. I guess the visibility is about 20 metres, 25 metres, something like that. So depending on how lucky you get with the cloud, um, you might be able to see everything or you might be able to see nothing at all. We jump back in the car and do the rest of the pass. So we're uh, just on the bottom of the Black Nabar Pass and we've seen a couple of uh, stags just to the side of the road. Uh, we didn't notice this when we are in the summer but I think it's because it's rutting season and they tend to come into the lower lands but um, definitely not afraid of us in particular. He looked quite aggressive this guy um, but yeah, nice little end to the Black Nabar Pass. So we followed the road um, down the Black Nabar Pass, we passed through Loch Carron and then we've gone along Loch Carron and we're now at the Eilean Donan Castle. Again, my uh, pronunciation isn't great with these Scottish Gaelic uh, <laughs> old school names, but um, I have to say it's an impressive looking castle. Yeah, and the castle's open in the winter months, which is pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna go walk around on my own. Jazz didn't fancy this one. Uh, so I'm gonna look like a bit of a sad act walking around, but there we go. So there we go, uh, mini tour inside the castle done. Uh, it's not as big inside as you'd expect to be honest, um, but nice big grand banqueting hall and all that stuff. The other thing is as well, you can't take photos or videos in there. They're obviously trying to protect it so that people just don't go on YouTube and watch videos like this. 10 quid for entry, not too bad I suppose. But if you're looking for something to pass the time and you want to go a slightly different route back to Inverness, Definitely recommend to stop off here. The other good thing, they've got a calf, a little takeout place as well. So we're gonna grab a toasty or something from there before we get back on the road. Okay. 
So we've just pulled in at the Inver Morriston Falls. Um, this is just around the corner from Loch Ness, which is obviously where we're staying tonight. And it took about an hour to get here from the uh, castle we were at. So if you're heading back to Inverness and you're at a bit of a loose end, there's quite a few paths you can take. So I'm gonna start walking. To get to the falls, it's probably like a five minute walk from the car park, not far at all. And uh, there's various little bits you can access it. And the river just follows this sort of ravine through the valley. Um, I think great if you've got kids and a dog maybe, just be careful on the cliff edge. Um, it's a bit of a sheer drop. And if you're not one for heights like me, you probably won't be going anywhere near the edge anyway. So yeah, I would definitely recommend a stop off here. Beautiful woodland, nice waterfalls. Just nice to be in the outdoors, isn't it? We made the short trip to the Loch Ness Inn where we grabbed a decent takeaway and for the last time on this trip got our head down for the night. We've stayed uh, in the Loch Ness Inn and it is on that town that I couldn't pronounce first time around, Drumna Drochid or whatever it's called. And it's a great base if you want to explore Loch Ness. Um, in the normal um, sort of spring and summer season you can do a lot of boat tour, you can go and try and find the Loch Ness Monster. So yeah, it's a great place to start and end the trip really. Because we found the Loch Ness Monster last time, we're just going to jump straight back in the car and head to Inverness Airport, which is about a 45 minute drive from here. So yeah, we're flying back at 2pm, uh, back to Birmingham Airport. We'll pick up Jazzy's car, go and collect Archie, and then that's it for this trip. So back to the original questions. Was it any good going in the winter? Absolutely. The weather for the most part was the same as our North Coast 500 trip in May. Although we did have two days of really strong winds, we missed out on any snow or cold weather. So generally, it was fine. How did we find staying in hotels and B&Bs? Overall, they were great and very comfortable. You don't quite get as much freedom as staying in a camper van, but you trade that off against the luxury of a nice room. What other cool places did you go to this time? We went to absolutely loads of different stop-offs. Once again, you can get my free trip itinerary below and I'm going to leave a link in the description. Are you mad? What's the right answer to that question? Um, aren't we all? And let me end by thanking you for watching this video all the way to the end. I do really appreciate it and most people will probably switch off after about 10 minutes. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. If you could like the video as well, that helps with the YouTube algorithm and comment below with any questions you might have about the North Coast 500 or my trip. I do actually respond to every single comment, so please leave one below. Don't forget, I've got a North Coast 500 guidebook coming out in spring 2022. So if you're watching this around March, April time, it will probably be available on Amazon. And I'm going to put the link below. This guidebook has taken the best part of a year to create and is a real no hassle guidebook. It's going to save you hours of research and contains multiple itineraries, packing lists and details about every location on the North Coast 500. Plus, it's got some of my untold stories and insider tips. I honestly think this is going to be a real game changer. So like I said, if you are interested, it will be released around spring 2022. Archie Baldy! Hello! Hello mate, where have we been? Hello! Right, boys. Hello Arch. Hello! 